Good morning all of you. I am going to start with a new topic for this course which is environment management. Till date we have already covered with various topics like introduction to the environment, then we have discussed about air pollution, then we have discussed about the water pollution, then we have uh, discussed about the greenhouse effect, global warming, and then we have uh, discussed about the ozone and the depletion of the ozone layer. Thereafter, we have discussed about solid waste and uh, uh, management of solid waste. And then we have discussed about uh, human population and its uh, effect on the environment. Today, I am going to discuss about this topic which is known as uh, land pollution. And in the definition part, we have already discussed that any substance if it exceeds beyond a certain limit if it affects human life and plant life and to the environment then it is known as pollution certainly if we are talking in terms of the land pollution it is it means that it is the pollution of the earth the natural uh, surface from various sources means that it is the pollution of the earth natural land surface by following sources so what are the major sources through which land pollution is caused? If we talk in terms of the industry then you know that in the industrial uh, manufacturing units there are certain uh, byproducts which are emitted either into the air or the effluent uh, waste like uh, water which is released uh, in the earth and then we have certain byproducts which after uh, treatment has to be disposed of. Therefore, industry is the major source of land pollution. I'll talk in terms of one example, I'll give you one example like power plant. If it is based on the coal based power plant then after burning the coal we see that uh, the ash is produced. Therefore, it creates a great problem on this earth. If these ash particles are released into the air, then it causes air pollution and it affects the respiratory system, it, uh, uh, it affects the climatic condition, hazy atmosphere is also uh, there. Therefore, the, this solid waste, if it is dumped on the land or the ground, then it creates a land pollution. Another source is the agricultural waste. You know that farming, we are doing farming and after uh, crop once the crop is grown then uh, we see that lot of agricultural waste is also released on the earth on the land surface and it causes the land pollution third major source is the domestic waste in day to day life we are using certain plastic goods then we are using some uh, plastic bottles then once they are used then they are thrown and it results in the pollution of the earth natural uh, land surface therefore domestic waste is the household waste which we are using uh, in our day to day life it can be for example like plastic goods which once used they are thrown then we have plastic bottles also then we have certain cans aluminium cans also packaging materials then we have a uh, household waste common like paper and cartons and there are certain variety of the waste which are emitted into the land or the earth surface. Then we have certain commercial activities which are going which also contributes to the uh, this land pollution. Power plant I have already discussed that for running a single power plant uh, about thousands of tons of coal is burned for uh, boiling the water, then uh, water makes the steam and that steam is taken to the turbine and the uh, generator generates electricity. But for the production of electricity from the coal based power plant, lot of ash is produced and that handling of the uh, ash is one of the great problems on this earth. Then we have several human activities as I have discussed that market waste is also there, hospital waste is also there, then we have common household waste domestic waste therefore these activities also contribute to the production of the waste and then if it is dumped or thrown on the earth land surface then it creates a land pollution 
Coming to the definition part, it is defined as the deposition of solid waste on the land affecting human life, plant life and the environment. Therefore, the common examples are uh, plastic bottles, then we have plastic containers, used paper, then cans and clothes and several other articles which are thrown on the land or the ground. Therefore, it is the deposition of solid waste on the land which affect human life, plant life and to the environment. I will give you a case history that the plastic bottles which are used for drinking water, if there is a statistic that if these used plastic bottles are collected from the entire world, then it can cover the earth surface about 34 to 34 times. Then you can think of that is the one of the example of the uh, waste which we are throwing on the earth. There are thousands of other sources from which waste is generated and if it is dumped in the ground and, and then it causes the pollution of the earth natural land surface. Major causes, what are the major causes of uh, land pollution? You can see there are several points. First is the increase in population. Now you see that due to overpopulation, the need of the uh, uh, common man has increased. The need in the sense that the more the population, the more the requirement and when more will be the requirement, the production will be very very higher and when there is a production from the industry that the waste generated from the industry is also in that quantity also. Though uh, government and we people are taking care of that but at the same time due to overpopulation the need of uh, humans has increased multifold and due to which we have to do the overproduction and this overproduction has resulted in the release of waste either a solid waste or a liquid waste or a gaseous waste into the land and it has resulted into the land pollution. Coming to the second point, we have a common tendency that use and throw and not in my backyard. N-I-M-B-Y means that not in my backyard lifestyle of people. What we do is that we throw on the, the uh, uh, used articles, garbage, and a, we throw it on the land on the earth surface and not in my backyard. This is the common lifestyle of the people. The disposal on land of non-biodegradable waste. Now waste when we have uh, discussed on the last uh, lecture, uh, there the waste has been classified into two types. First one is said to be a biodegradable waste and then the other one it is said to be a non-biodegradable waste. Biodegradable waste means that which can be easily digested with the help of microbes and non-biodegradable waste means that plastic bottles or glass bottles or any article which cannot be digested with the help of microbes. Therefore, there is accumulation of such articles in a great huge quantity and which has resulted in the pollution of the earth land surface and causes land pollution. Then we have already discussed that agricultural waste is released and it is thrown but then it is a biodegradable waste that it can results in the increase in the fertility of the soil because it results in the formation of the humus and then we have seen that mining, yes of course mining waste is one of the major source of land pollution because uh, metallurgy process is done for the extraction of metals then there are several steps done for the uh, uh, production of that metal it includes concentration, smelting, gravity separation, roasting process in the industry and ultimately for the uh, for manufacturing a pure metal a metallurgical steps is done and lot of solid waste and is emitted on the land surface therefore mining is one of the important uh, source of land pollution then we see that dumping of toxic material toxic which are hazardous hazardous and poisonous for the human life therefore dumping of toxic materials such as chemicals and paints also contribute to the land pollution then the next point is the improper treatment of waste means that 
we uh, throw the waste on the land but before uh, a prior treatment of that waste is uh, necessary we see that there are two types of waste uh, biodegradable and non biodegradable therefore segregation of the waste uh, has to be done prior to disposal because until unless we segregate the waste then it will result in the pollution of the earth land source therefore Next is the uh, burning of the solid waste. Uh, we see that lot of solid waste is burnt and when it is burnt then poisonous gases are also emitted into the atmosphere and it results in the air pollution problem. But if this uh, waste is properly treated and if it is segregated then this process is helpful otherwise burning of the solid waste and production of the ash has resulted into, into the land pollution. Then we have the garbage dumped by the people. A lot of garbage which is produced from the small scale industries is, is dumped without prior treatment and therefore this has resulted into the land pollution problem. So these are some of the major causes of land pollution and what the first main important was the overpopulation because the more the population the more will be the requirement and the needs and to fulfill those needs and requirements we have a lot of industries coming on and if there are a lot of industries coming on this uh, 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 for the production process then ultimately lot of solid waste is also emitted into the atmosphere and it results in, it results in the land pollution problem. So these are some of the points, maybe not in my backyard, we throw the garbage in front of the other house or where we see that if someone is not watching us then we throw all the garbage from our house to the neighbor house and we do not uh, dispose at proper place. Uh, disposal of, of non-biodegradable waste, agricultural waste, mining waste, dumping of toxic materials such as chemicals and paints. Then we have improper treatment of waste, burning of solid waste is also one of the major factors and the last is the garbage dumped by the people. Therefore these are the some of the major sources which has resulted. Now you see that certainly if the waste is released on the earth then it will have effect on the human life, on the plant life and to the environment. Therefore we see that uh, it has a great damage on the wildlife, on the plant life and on the human life. Certainly it affects the respiratory system uh, because uh, the gases which are emitted and the solid waste which is burned it results in the uh, asthma problem, respiratory problems and we have certain skin problems also coming up then they, there has been an effect on the birth defects also and certainly if we dump the solid waste on the ground it will spoil the natural beauty of the earth and there will be adverse effect uh, on the beauty of that place therefore these, uh, uh, these are some of the effects which are seen due to uh, solid waste on the waste that is dumped on the surface of the land or it is dumped under the ground. Then we come to the hazardous waste because we have already in the last lecture classified the waste into uh, biodegradable, non-biodegradable then we have a waste which was general, toxic in nature, non-toxic in nature and there, this toxic waste is also known as the hazardous waste. It means that it includes all those substances which have threat to the public health and to the environment and these hazardous waste they can also be a solid waste or a liquid waste and a gaseous waste and they can be a byproduct of manufacturing process, discarded or unused commercial products. Some of them, uh, their properties which you can see there on the slide, they are really very very uh, dangerous because all these hazardous wastes are a corrosive in nature. Corrosive means that they result in the, uh, they uh, increase the uh, corrosion process or the results in the rusting of the uh, matters. Therefore, these uh, byproducts or the unused or the discarded uh, products results in the corrosion process. Therefore, they are highly corrosive. Second one, it is said to be they are very, very reactive. So, before disposing of uh, 
uh, you should be uh, we should be careful that these are highly reactive and they may react with other substances and they may sometimes result in the explosion also and they are very very dangerous therefore these hazardous waste are corrosive they are highly reactive they are highly explosive also therefore care must be taken they are oxidizing and they are irritant and certainly they, produce, they certainly they produce irritation on the eyes on the skin therefore these are some of the common uh, properties of this hazardous waste corrosive reactive explosive oxidizing nature then irritant and last but not the least it, they are carcinogenic also carcinogenic means that they uh, results in the uh, cancer uh, uh, and disease also so these are some of the effects what are the examples of this hazardous space hazardous space you can see uh, pesticides the pesticide this is a very harmful chemical which is used for controlling the pest about 10,000 variety of organic chemicals are used for controlling the pest but certainly if they are thrown on the ground then it results in the pollution of the land or the earth surface therefore pesticides are one of the major uh, example of hazardous waste then we have paints and solvents paints and solvents they contain lead and zinc and mercury salts and therefore they are highly highly dangerous then we have a waste released from automotive industry which is known as automotive waste then a waste like mercury it is used in thermometer it is also very very toxic because mercury vapors are very very dangerous because these mercury vapors result in the uh, effect of, of and effect in the central nervous system of a human being and you very well know that in my previous lecture I have discussed about Mina Mata tragedy or a Mina Mata disease which was observed in Japan and the fish which was contaminated due to mercury and when the people eat those fishes all of them they died because of that disease therefore mercury containing waste if it is emitted on the land on the earth surface it also results in uh, land pollution then we have e-waste certainly lot of electronics uh, we are using all the electronic gadgets we are using in day to day life without that no one can survive therefore this e-waste is also a major example of hazardous waste because the batteries which are used in the mobile phones and the camera and the laptop they contain lead compound, they compound zinc and several other salts which results in the uh, pollution of the earth and land surface then we are, use, we are using aerosols aerosols they are also very very dangerous then we have caustic and cleaning agents which results in the pollution of the earth and land surface then we have refrigerant containing substances so these are the example of uh, hazardous waste uh, freon is one of the example of refrigerant containing substance and in the ozone chapter I have uh, explained that if freon gas is emitted into the atmosphere it results in the depletion of ozone layer and ozone which is very important for trapping the ultraviolet light coming from the sun there the ozone is converted into oxygen and oxygen cannot trap the ultraviolet light and uh, hence uh, the UV light uh, reaches the earth and it mainly affects the skin, skin cancer then we have eyes and several other problems therefore these were some of the examples of the hazardous waste coming to the control of hazardous space now since a lot of industries are coming up then we have overpopulation electronic industries coming up and I, in the, my previous slide I have shown you that these, there are several sources mining source, industry then we have agricultural waste then we have hospital waste then domestic waste all these contribute to the major effect on the human life on to the plant life and to the environment therefore control of hazardous waste is uh, is a need of the hour then what we can do is that disposal of hazardous waste through landfills in the solid waste management we have seen that landfills are uh, uh, pits that are made uh, under the ground and then there is a plastic sheet or layer 
which is coated at the bottom of the pit or the ground and then the solid waste is dumped in that and the liquid component of that solid waste is pumped with the help of pipeline and a motor and it is then sent for the treatment plant. Therefore landfills are and nowadays we are using the modern sanitary landfills. Modern sanitary landfills uh, means that uh, the seepage of the uh, solid waste is prevented from the seepage is prevented so that the underground uh, water source is not contaminated uh, by the liquid portion of that solid waste or the hazardous waste therefore then we have uh, incineration process the machines or the equipment used for doing incineration is known as incinerator and we uh, set the temperature it is nearly 500 to 700 degree centigrade and the, all the solid waste after segregation means that the biodegradable and non-biodegradable separating all the uh, batteries and then all the uh, carcinogenic compounds then we see that uh, we can burn this at, uh, at very high temperature and that process is known as incineration similarly we can do the pyrolysis process also uh, for example lead acid batteries electronic circuit boards where the heavy metals can be recovered and they can be used in the new products because i said that because if these heavy metals or lead or electronic circuit boards with heavy metals are burned then uh, they create another problem on the earth and the ash uh, which is uh, produced by burning the coal uh, you see that it could be treated and used for pavement fillings and it can be used for the construction of the bricks so therefore we can control the hazardous waste which is uh, released from several sources by uh, modern sanitary landfills by incineration process then we have biolysis process and uh, we can uh, make use of this uh, waste uh, for construction purpose like the ash which is generated from the coal base power plant they, it can be used for the construction of bricks thereby controlling the hazardous waste coming to the uh, next topic of my lecture it is uh, somewhat related to the uh, waste uh, basically a solid waste and it is known as basal convention B A S E L now what are what actually is the basic convention uh, it is in response to a series of incidents involving dumping of solid waste in developing countries basically in africa and asia now exporting waste to developing countries were found to be an easy solution due to the following reasons so what are the various reasons which are uh, responsible for a series of incidents which took place basically in, uh, in the year 1989 or near to that so due to high poverty and high debt these nations saw import of waste as a source of foreign action therefore the developed countries what they did is that they uh, made an offer to the developing countries that they would be paying millions of dollars or currency to the developing nation for uh, the, man, the throwing of this waste the high level of corruption in the developing countries made it possible to promote the trade uh, of hazardous waste the lack of technical expertise which helped the developed nation to hide the harmful effect of the solid waste now you see that there was no technical expertise and these countries they do not know that what is the harmful effect of this solid waste therefore uh, now next is the lack of environmental regulations in the developing countries they are not much aware about the environment protection therefore these are some of the factors which have resulted in the series of incidents uh, due to dumping of solid hazardous waste in the developing countries and mainly it was observed in Africa and Asia and these were some of the factors poverty level of high level of corruption then we have lack of technical expertise and then we have lack of environmental regulation coming to the next slide which shows you that what are the salient features of basal convention since it deals with the control of transboundary movement of hazardous waste and its disposal the convention has 172 parties and aim to protect 
human health and the environment against the adverse effect uh, due to generation, comma, management, transformatory movement and disposal of hazardous waste. It was adopted in 1989 and the main objective of the convention are as follows. First point is the reduce transboundary movement of hazardous waste to a minimum. What is the next point? Ensure that hazardous waste are treated and disposed of as close as possible to the source of generation. Then minimize hazardous waste generation at the source. Then we have it is prohibited to export or import hazardous waste or other waste to or from a non-party state. These are some of the salient features of the Basel, Basel Convention and it has 172 countries uh, which aim to protect human health and the environment. Next point is that no waste may be exported if the state of import has not given it its consent in writing. Therefore, all has to be legal permission. No developed country can throw or export or import waste without prior permission. Transforming movement of waste must be authorized where there is no danger attaching to their movement. Therefore, transboundary movement of waste must be authorized. The waste which are to be exported or imported must be properly labeled and properly packed and transported according to the international standards. So, therefore, these are some of the salient features of Basel Convention and it deals with the transboundary movement of hazardous waste and hazardous waste we have seen that uh, this has resulted into the major problem on the earth it causes uh, land pollution it affects the human life it affects the plant life and to the environment therefore this is all about this two topic land pollution and the Basel Convention which we have uh, studied today. Uh, thank 